So for today's quilt block tutorial, we're going to work on this variation of a pineapple block. It's not a true pineapple block, but it has the triangles that go out. They radiate from the center and out. So I already have everything cut. And what we're going to do is we're going to, there's a method called square in a square. And we are just going to start with that method by taking our triangles, our first round of triangles. And we're gonna go right sides together, but we're not gonna go this one to this one, or this triangle to here, then this triangle to here. We're gonna join the opposites first, and then we will press, and then we will join these two. And we're gonna proceed by doing that same type of method, joining the next row of triangles. From there, we're going to be joining our white rectangles that you can see go all the way out to the edge. And as we move along in each round, we will then add our, currently they're squares. We're gonna use the stitch and flip, that's what I call it, stitch and flip method. If you can see this line that I've already drawn from corner to corner on the diagonal, we'll be going right sides together with this square onto our white round of rectangles after we join them. And we will sew directly on that line. We will trim a quarter inch away, so it's gonna be on the outside and away from the center of the block. And then we'll flip this triangle in place. Now I will be finger pressing everything because I do not have an iron over near me. So let's get started. We're gonna begin in the middle. So we're gonna take our center square and our first light triangle. You're gonna take your triangle and you're gonna do the same with the square, but you're gonna find center by folding that longer edge, the longer edge in half, and just crease it with your fingers. We're also gonna find center with our square. Easy peasy, right? Just fold it in half and squeeze, crease, and then fold it in half the other way. So you're folding in half <clears throat> horizontal and vertically increase with your fingers. Now we're gonna take our first one, we're gonna go right sides together and align those creased marks that you did with your fingers. And now we're gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance. Please check your quarter inch before you begin because it, these are not oversized. So you need to be precise. And I'm also lessening my stitch length. It was on a 2.5 and I'm changing it to a 2.0. All right, so I'm gonna finger press, press it away from the center square. And you'll have these little dog ears. Don't worry about them right now. Now, let's go to the opposite side and join this one. I'm gonna fold this one in half. There we go, I'm gonna crease. Right sides together, crease to crease. Easy peasy, correct? And we're gonna keep on going. Okay, flip it in place. Now I'm using batik, so it's really easy to finger press. Now we still have these little triangles sticking out past our square. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove them, but I'm gonna flip it over upside down and I'm gonna use the edge of my square right here to remove this. That way I have a line to go by. Oops, I also have a thread. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, one more time. Do this one. And this one. Perfect. And remove, discard the little triangles. Don't need to keep these, these are too tiny. They're too microscopic. <laughs> okay. So let's put it back in place. Now let's do this one. 
I already have the crease, but I'm going to go ahead and show you. Fold in half, crease it with your fingers, match crease to crease, raw edge to raw edge, or cut edge to cut edge of each of the shapes, and sew your quarter inch. Okay. Oops, there we go. It's looking nice. Now, I can see there's a little bit of a difference. Look here. This, this side is going way past, and this side is not lined up. So something happened. And I'm not sure what happened, but something did happen, so I may not have lined it up correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that one really quick and align it correctly. I think that's what happened. There we go. Oh, and I did not. I had it off. Okay, so I've now placed it in the correct position. Now let's not put my presser foot down on my finger. That does not feel good. Oh, there we go. Now another thing that you want to watch <clears throat> when you are joining these is when you're sewing your needle, this little intersection right here, your needle as it's coming and sewing, it should land right there in that intersection. Okay, that's just a little tip. Okay, let's pull this, there we go. Okay, now, now they look much better. They're lined up correctly. Now let's do this one. I'm gonna fold this in half, make sure it's that crease is in the right position or the right place. And now we're gonna do the same thing again. Align those creases up. Now, if it helps you, you can place a clip or a pin to hold them in place till you move it from one position to the next. And now let's sew. Oh, it looks good. Looks very good. Now we have the triangles that are um, sticking out past our square. So I'm gonna take my scissors and you can use, you can do this from the front. And I'm gonna use the edge right there. And I know I have a quarter inch from here to the edge, I can tell. I have a quarter inch, so I'm not worried about it. And that is our goal, to have a quarter inch seam allowance. Whoops, don't cut the wrong thing. There we go from the tip of the square right here. Let's see if I can get it so you can see it. From here, if that would just lay down. There we go. From here to the, the edge, you need to have a quarter inch and that needs to be that way all the way around. Okay, so let's place it back and turn it. Now, we know that the center of this square is now right here where our white triangles crossed over each other. So now we're gonna do our next round and these are my yellow triangles. So I'm going to go right sides together, fold it in half just like I did before, give it a good crease. Let's join this one right here. So you want that crease to end up lining up where those two crossed over. Now, because these are bias, I am going to place a pin in here because for some reason, these little buggers, they just try to move on me. Now, let's get these lined up correctly. Cut edge to cut edge. And I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna flip it over and sew it upside down so that I can watch these seam allowances. Because I don't want the feed dogs to grab them and make a hot mess out of them. Because sometimes that happens. And this way I have control. Remove the pin, don't sew over the pin. 
Now, as I pulled the pin out, I have to readjust the triangle, the yellow triangle. Okay, I'll show you this one. Okay, let me finger press this one. See, I have plenty of room and I did not, I did not sew into my purpley red square, whatever, it's, it's really purple, it's not red. So we have plenty of room and it needs to be that way all the way around. Now I'm not gonna trim these little triangles just yet, I'm gonna wait. So let's do the next one. And I'm gonna go ahead and do on the opposite side. They're all the same, so just pick them up and work with them. Okay, so this one already has the crease in it. So I'm gonna take the crease. You know what, I'm gonna try to help you out a little bit just so you can see this. Let's see if I can, there we go. Okay, so what I did was I drew a line on here so that you can see it. And what I'm gonna do is I take that and I place it right where the two white triangles cross over each other and I just gently move it all the way forward so that I can place a pin in here and hold it in place. Here we go. And now it's time to sew. All right. Now these triangles, I actually increased by an eighth of an inch because I want to be able to trim this one to this round to four and a half inches. So remember that number. Okay, there we go. Now, remember how we trimmed off the little triangles before? We flipped it over to the back side and then we just use the line. There we go, from our previous shape, if you will to cut the excess right off. Do that again over here. I shouldn't say line, it's the edge. It's the edge of the shape. Okay, and then I did not cut the edge of the other shape, the white triangle. I did not cut that at all. So now we're gonna join the other two, same method, it's already folded in half, but I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna mark the center so you can see it, just in case you didn't get it. I line it up there where the two white triangles cross each other and bring it up. And again, I'm going to sew it upside down so I can watch what happens to that thick seam right there. Sometimes the feed dogs grab it and try to make a hot mess out of it, and sometimes they don't. I don't honestly know what to do to make that not happen, except for flip it upside down and watch it. Okay, I'm close to the middle. We're gonna remove my pin and realign. There we go. Okay, whoops. See how well I did. Oh, I did okay. Now this one, I actually caught the tip of it. I'm hoping that you can't really tell too much, but if you pull, it looks like it might be there. So I'm gonna, but it looks like it's gone. All right, let's go ahead and sew the next one. And I need, I can't see my crease. Nope, yep, there it is. Sometimes it helps to mark the crease. There we go. Place a pin in it. Okay, once I sew this, I'm, more, I'm going to trim this to the correct size. She'll be four and a half inches. That looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. All right, it is time to press this with the iron and then trim it to four and a half inches. And then I'll meet you right back here and then we're gonna start our rounds. Before we move on to joining our, our rectangles and our stitch and flip corner triangles, let's talk about the measurements 
of these of the center unit. Your very center square is a two and a half inch square. Your light triangles or whatever background color you're using, you're going to cut one square at three and a quarter inches and you're going to cut it on both diagonals. Now before you do that, make sure that you spray starch the fabric before you cut the first cut because we have bias here, but at the same time, if you cut your square and then spray it, your square shrinks. So prepare your fabric before you cut it. So let's do that again. This center square is two and a half inches. The light triangles, the first round, spray starts the fabric first. It's a three and one quarter inch square cut on both diagonals. Next, these are two three inch squares. One, two, you cut on one diagonal again spray starch these before you cut that fabric. So you need two of these yellow squares and you only cut on one diagonal, just one. And that's how you get the four yellow triangles. Okay, now we're gonna move on to doing the logs. So I'm gonna remove a few pieces here so that you can see the first round. Now I've already trimmed this to four and a half inches. Easy peasy. Before you trim anything, double check each intersection right here to make sure that you have a quarter inch seam allowance. So we're gonna take our first round. These are one and a half by four and a half. We're gonna go right sides together. You know the routine with this. And I'm gonna quickly sew one to each of the sides and then our top and bottom rectangles are slightly larger. Again, right sides together. finger press these and you're going to press them towards the light rectangle. Our next will be these two. These are one and a half by six and a half. So this is your top and bottom. So throughout you will sew your sides first and then your top and bottom. Okay, let's get this one joined. Let's do this one. Had to make sure I had it right sides going in the correct direction. Okay, there we go. Whoops. Okay, first round, we have completed. Now it's time to do our stitch and flip corners. So each of the corners are going to be green. So I'm gonna get set up for that because I need to change the foot of my machine. So I'm gonna demonstrate first before I sew. So you're gonna sew directly on that drawn line on each one of these. You can go ahead and pin each one in place before um, you sew so that you can sew, 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 and sew. So once you sew them in place, let's see if I turn this one back, if it works. Yeah, you can see it. 
So we're going to come in here. Now it's not perfectly lined up, but do you see how it makes the corner once we flip it in place? That's how that works. Then you'll take your rotary cutter and a ruler. You'll take the quarter inch line from your ruler, line it up with the seam that you just sewed, place it directly on that seam and it should run corner to corner and then you'll remove it. You will cut it off so that now you have a quarter inch seam allowance so it's secure. You'll flip it in place and you'll press. Now I am using um, the Frixion clicker fine extra fine point uh, ballpoint pen and so the heat of the iron will, rem will remove my drawn lines. So let me find my correct foot. I'm going to use an open toe foot so that I can see the line. So I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So I have my open toe foot and as you can see this is a clear foot but I will clearly be able to see the drawn line on the fabric. So I can keep the red line, the center line that is marked on my foot aligned with the line I drew. So anytime I have to do the stitch and flip method, I use this foot. I think I have three of them because I have three sewing machines. All right, so let's get started. Now I'm gonna remove these. I'm just gonna work on the one. And actually, I'm going to do one more step to help you out. And I'm going to lower my light so that you can see this because there's a big glare. So my first step is to align the square, the colored square, the two and a half inch square with the raw edges. You need to make sure that it's aligned perfectly with those so that when we remove the excess and flip it in place, it will line up correctly. All right, I hope this helps. Oops, let's not lose those. And I'm gonna turn on my laser lights just to help you see how I'm sewing. There we go. There's one corner. And I'm just gonna keep moving it around. Align it. If you need to use a pin or a clip, by all means do so. If this is the first time you've tried this technique, I would recommend that you do so. Because fabric has a mind of its own. Okay, sewing directly on the second one, directly on that line. Okay, let's do the third corner. Looks like I might run out of bobbin soon. Now what I'm doing there when you see me grab this and pull it underneath is I'm the thread, because I'm using the uh, scissor button to cut the thread, I'm loosening it so I'm relieving it actually so that I can line this up without having the thread underneath or to the side pulling the corner of the block of the one on top, the block on top. I'll get it out in a minute. Okay. It's slowly moving this one. All right. See, we've got three done. Now we're going to do the last one. There we go. Oops. Ah. Okay, you guys, stay, stay where you're supposed to be. Okay. There we go. Okay, now it's time to cut the excess. We're gonna do the first one. Now I would recommend before you lay your ruler on top and, and cut the excess away, take the piece that's gonna flip in place because we're gonna remove this. Before we do that, go ahead and pull the new triangle that's going to be on the corner right in place to make sure it's landing in the correct place. And I did not sew over that corner. Yay! I would do that for each one before you remove it. That way in case you did sew crooked, you can fix it 
before you remove it and have a wonky corner. Okay, now you're gonna align the quarter inch line of your ruler on your stitched line. It's, so I have a quarter inch there. Now I ha I've given myself a quarter inch seam allowance. And if you're wondering what kind of rotary cutter this is, this is a Martelli and it's ergonomic. There we go. So you don't need these, so I'm gonna toss this. And if it cuts a little crooked, it's okay as long as you don't get into your seam allowance. Okay, so now, again, check before you cut. Make sure, and we're good here, and we're good on the outside. Hold it in place. Now, sometimes because you're cutting over, ow, oh, that was my knee I just hit. Sometimes when you're cutting over like where this intersection is back here, it's a little bulky and it might slip on you. Your ruler might slip. Just, just to let you know, just be a little cautious. Maybe have a little stronger grip on there. Don't get your fingers in the way. And we're gonna do the last one. There we go. Oh, that is in the way, isn't it? So sorry. There we go. Put that baby back over there and let's cut. Okay, woohoo, almost hit my knee again. <laughs> my little shelf under here, woo. <laughs> okay, so now look, that's your, you've got, if I can get all these to lay flat for the moment, I do need to press them. So we have round one of the triangle, light triangles, round two, the gold, or the yellow, whatever color you're using. And then this is round three. So let me press so I can get these going and I'll show you it one more time, but I think you've got the technique now. Look how pretty it looks. <laughs> Our next step is what? What do we join next? Is it our top and bottom? Or is it our side pieces? Or is it another colored square? Hmm. It's our side pieces. Right now, this should be six and a half inches square. This strip is one and a half by six and a half. So for the pattern, you're gonna cut two, one and a half by four and a half, four, one and a half by six and a half because we just used the six and a half on this piece right here. This piece right here was one and a half by six and a half. Now we need two more, so that makes four. All right, so let's join these. This is such a pretty block. And actually, I think, oh, I'm gonna trim it, so give me just a minute, because it looks like I have some pieces, some scraggles. Hang on. Okay, I just had some pieces hanging off the edge that I wanted to, didn't hit my knee, yay! I just wanted to straighten those up, they bug me. All right, so we're gonna join this piece and we're gonna join this one. And then these two will join to the top afterwards. All right, let's get these on and hope I have enough thread in my bobbin. Oh, and I got to change feet. I have to go back to my quarter inch foot. Okay, so I'm going to whiz through these. And if you are have already cut your pieces of fabric and you're working on yours, you go ahead and sew along with me. Now, if you hold the corner tight that it needs to go to, and if there's any kind of little little tiny bits of fullness, it the feed dogs will fit those in or fit that fullness in. Let me make sure I picked up the right piece. Okay, so now we're going to join the other one. Remember, we're working side to side, top to bottom. Okay, I'm going to add the other side to it. Whoops, got it up too high. 
There we go. So I'm going to sew for just a second. I'm going to stop. I'm going to take that corner piece and I'm going to line these two corners up down here so that everything is in place because I'm not using pins right now. Oh, that was my finger. If you were using pins, you would pin it in place. There we go. Our feed dogs help us out in that sense. I can see everything's moving. All right, go ahead and press, and you're gonna press away from the center. This entire block gets pressed away from that center square. Now we're gonna add the, the top and the bottom. So I have my colored squares just laid out. I did this, this really pretty, like a ocean turquoise tealy green, it's blue. It's, it's just so pretty, I'll move this one. So the next one I have is like this purpley blue one and then peach, which also has some pink and some lavender in it and yellow. And then I did this green here. You can do whatever color scheme you want. I literally grabbed from my scraps that were sitting on my cutting table. Uh oh, because I had my pattern testers over and um, this was, these scraps are from the quote we're working on. All right, so I'm gonna join this first strip now this is the eight and a half inch, one and a half by eight and a half. Line these corners up. So we're going to hold these corners. I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to line these two corners, hold them with my finger because I have them aligned. Don't let them get away from you. I'm going to move that. And hope I don't run out of bobbin thread. One more stitch. Okay, and now we're gonna do the next one. And there we go. So now when we finish this one, this block at this time, at this round, will be eight and a half inches square. this. We're going to press these in place and remember press away from that center. Oh, how'd you get on there? Press away from that center. Look how pretty these look. Okay, now the block should be at this point eight and a half inches. So you're going to need two more eight and a half inch, one and a half by eight and a half inch rectangles and they're right here. Oops, picked up the wrong one. That's this one and this one. And then we'll need, we're gonna do the corners, but just give me a minute. And then we're gonna attach the 10 and a half inch ones. So these are one and a half by 10 and a half. So you also need to cut four of these to make this block. All right, I need to press this. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and do these lavender blue squares next. I think that's really pretty. All right. I'll meet you back here in a few minutes and I will have the block done and I will tell you the, the finished dimensions of everything when I get back. All right, I have finished my variation of a pineapple block or also called pineapple variation. It was very easy. Here's your dimensions one more time and I will have them available as a PDF download. <clears throat> Excuse me, two and a half inch square, one, three and a quarter inch square cut on both diagonals, two yellow squares or whatever color you choose that are three inches each, cut them on one diagonal. All of these were two and a half inch squares. You will need four of each color that you choose that's going to go out because you put them on the same corner. Now, Here's your dimensions. This will be four and a half inches square. So you're gonna need two one and a half by 
four and a half inch light rectangles. Four one and a half by six and a half inch light rectangles. These two right here are the other two of the one and a half by six and a half inch rectangles because you had to make four. One, two, three, four, or you had to cut four. Right here, the next round is four one and a half by eight and a half inch rectangles. You will use one top bottom and the next round is going to be the left and right. So then you'll do the left and right at one and a half by eight and a half and then the top and bottom are one and a half by ten and a half and again you're going to cut four of these. So each one of the top ones you will cut four of. Next this is the ten and a half you're going to do ten and a half on the sides. One and a half by ten and a half, left and right sides. Top and bottom, two one and a half by twelve and a half inch light rectangles. Join them just as I showed you. Your block will turn out to be twelve and a half inches by twelve and a half inches, and that is unfinished. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial on the variation of a pineapple quilt block. If you like my channel, please click on the red bell, the subscribe button. You can also find me on Facebook at nancymcnallyquilts.com and I have a Facebook group, So Anyways, with Nancy McNally. You can also find me on Instagram at McNallyNancy. Have a wonderful day, happy quilting, and we'll see you next time.